Oh, of course, now that everyone has smartphones, you can just check online. Hey, I'm gonna buy these pills. That means I'm gonna Uh, Superman, uh, the Grand Morrison bro, was, uh, an accident. He's dead. The face, the face. Welcome to At the Table with Destiny Comics. Real quick, let's uh, do the uh, the introduction here, starting on the left. Hi, I'm Maylee Noel. Michael Sanders. Uh, Brandon Noel. Sarah Hadamio. Luis Lopez. Hey, and you're listening to uh, At the Table with Destiny Comics. By the way, I like the way Luis said his name. Luis Lopez. Like all <laughs> deep and everything. What's that? A da 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 in there. <laughs> no, it's, it's more subtle than Gigante. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, real quick before we jump in and, and start talking about Doctor Who, because we'll spend hours hours on Doctor Who. Um, hours? Yeah. We'll talk about 50 years. Yeah, 50 years of history. Um, For every year, there's an hour of talking. Of talking. We'll get done by year 100. <laughs> um, oh. But before we, we dive into that, um, real quick, uh, Black Friday at IE Comics in Hemet, California. We're going to have a booth. We'll have books. I'll be doing uh, sketches. Um, it'll be a good time. Uh, come out, see us. We should be there all day. Um, and then talking about Flat Black Friday, we're going to have a Cyber Monday sale at the website. For one day and one day only, we're going to give away a free comic book because I'm a cheap bastard. <laughs> and uh, for one day, we'll be able to go to the website, uh, destinycomics.wix.com slash comics, and download a brand new, never published comic. And it'll just be that one day, and we might never even publish it. Just for the the five of you who are loyal fans. Get on the ground floor, kids. Wow, yeah. I'm impressed you think we have five fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those five of you that may or may not really exist, thank you for your support, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. definitely. Let me answer for them. We thank you for your much dedication to the fan base. <laughs> More yeah. smurfs. Um, I, I, I'm guessing now's the time to tell you that one of those fans is my mom. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> There's just a giant hoard of 8-bit stuff <laughs> in the closet. <laughs> Christmas, it, it falls all out at Christmas one year. <laughs> Open the closet. <laughs> my mom would be that fan, but she can't figure out how to listen to us on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, if you're listening to the podcast on iTunes, um, five-star review, get us a review, it helps the... Find Brandon's mom and teach her how to use it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> but in addition to that we're going to have uh, the books on sale as always we're going to be doing t-shirts and uh, it, it's not set in stone yet but at the end of this podcast there will be a promotional code given away to give you a discount on your t-shirts if you buy t-shirts on Cyber Monday Code? Yeah, there's going to be a code. i got to figure out the code. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is yet. Gotta get into, uh, yeah. It'll just die, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I have your pen and paper. So I got a yeah. pen pad here. I don't look at the pen and pad. It's nothing. Yeah, so it'll give, <laughs> it, it should uh, give a, like, 25% discount on t-shirt orders. That's pretty, that's so pretty good. <laughs> stay tuned to the very end of the podcast for well, he's not telling us that the shirt's like 100 bucks a pop. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So thank you for buying a seventy five dollars yeah. shirt. Yeah, so um, that's uh, and all that will be on the website for Cyber Monday. We're going to be doing uh, t shirts. We have a lunchbox deal. We're actually I'm excited lunch. about that. I saw that. We got three lunch boxes. We got eight uh, bit pop. We got Mr. Cuddles and Betty Bombshell. Not gonna I, lie, I kind of want I, a Betty Bombshell one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of between Betty and the eight bit and the eight bit title. Yeah. Um, cool. I I wish I could have got them for a cheaper deal. They're like forty forty ninety five um, on the website, and uh, our our royalty off those is just not not even funny. Like they're bare minimum. We're barely making anything. You sold seventy five thousand. Yeah. Here's twenty bucks. <laughs> uh, but it was something I wanted to do to for you know that's the not too far off there. the truth. <laughs> yeah. So for every eight thousand you sell, you get a dollar. Uh, oh, I wish that were how high like, we were making. <laughs> it's like AdSense revenue. <laughs> it really is. It, it really is. Um, oh, my goodness. Eventually, we'll move to self-production where we're not dealing with third party. But we need to get to a place to where, you know, we can warehouse product, where we can, yeah. you know, make the products ourselves and stuff. And eventually, that's where I want to go. I don't want to keep doing third party production. $15,000 $15, more dollars and we got our printing press. Yeah. yeah. Woo! 
just think how collectible these are going to be in years to come. Yeah, because we won't be doing the paper. <laughs> yeah, we won't be doing these lunch boxes later down the line when we move to self production. We'll, we'll, yeah. you know, they look good. I've seen them. They look really good. But uh, we, we will be when we move to self production. We'll if we do a lunch box, I want a tin, like nineteen forties tin oh, lunch print, box. Yeah. Tin one. Yeah, those are cool. Um, so this is metal, kids. <laughs> Everything used to be made out of this. <laughs> Playground equipment. Metal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your mom's shoes. Metal. Make it sharp. And <laughs> sharp. Oh, and man. sharp edges. So, yeah. Back yeah. then we had to employ nurses at schools. <laughs> Our kids were dying. They earned the money, too. <laughs> Every third medical. Uh, patient they knew how to school stitch. Out of, you know, cutting their foreheads and pulling off the playground. It's not, like in your, it's not like in your day where they just put a thermometer in your mouth. We used to stitch and suture. <laughs> <laughs> Every monkey bar set came with a box of, like, tetanus shots. <laughs> no joke. There's, my, a, there's a hanging box of band-aids. <laughs> no joke. My cousin, you know, had one of those play sets you put up yourself and it was a metal and they literally himself. did not put it in the ground and so every time he's weighing but that want thing oh, yeah. oh, god. And, god. Most of oh us my had gosh that. we all played on that thing and once the later I was like oh my gosh I could have totally died you could have died thing. yeah we wanted to see how hard we can make it skip <laughs> and, make, and see if we can get it to actually move across the yard now we're like how are we alive I know. those were supposed to be sunk in the yeah. ground with concrete I think at the very minimum I should have had like a broken arm because I used to jump off the swings. You know? I yeah, I've never broken a limb, and yet me and my cousins used to jump off this roof <laughs> onto a trampoline while wet from being in a pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow! And while they were swimming, they were trying to keep their blow dryers above <laughs> yeah. the surface. When I, when I was a kid, we couldn't afford one of those slip and slides with the pools at the end of it that you would splash into. Uh-huh. So we dug a little hole, oh. and, we <laughs> <laughs> and we got one of those long. It was like a slip and slide, but it wasn't. It was like an off-round slap and slude or something. Slap and slap and slap and we just like we, we put it into the hole at the end. We put water in it to make it splash, and because it moved around, we put bricks on the outside of it. Oh. <laughs> it's amazing the kind of stupid shit you do as a kid. Oh, we didn't even have the like the rubber slide mat when I was a kid. We did, we had a really smooth concrete walkway by our house, so we just like spray sprayed water on it. It's like you hit the carport, yeah. we aren't helping you. You can kind of slide a little bit on your feet. I did that. Oh yeah, we're like go and then you just go down. Yeah. How My many cousin didn't know how to stop himself, so he <laughs> ever he didn't have silver teeth for a while. You ever hit like a rock or something? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh yeah. I think the worst thing that I ever did is at one point. Uh, when I was about 10 and 11, we lived on this, you know, a lot of land, and there was this pond, and my mm-hmm. cousin and I used to swim in it and, like, catch, you know, uh, tadpoles and stuff. Well, I felt so bad. We, my cousin, my cousin's older brother, um, built a ladder out of wood. <laughs> Not thinking this all the way through. We used to climb up that. Well, a friend came over and started swimming in the pond with us, and then we all started to go up the ladder onto the, the deck. And she, broke. it broke, and she cut her foot open, like sliced it. Ooh. She had to get stitches, and I felt so bad oh. for that. But I think that was like the last time we ever. Swam but at the same time, she was like, "That's never happened to us." <laughs> I <know. Yeah. laughs> You're I bad luck. I felt bad because uh, me and my cousin went up first. She was the last one to go up. Oh, God. So I was like, oh. In the back of your mind, you're like, thank goodness we went first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one, of the, her. one of the stories that happened to me when my grandmother used to be a uh, school teacher. Uh-oh. And so I was at her school for summer vacation or whatever. And I was on a government swing set that was cemented in the ground. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to go for height. I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna be that one kid who flips it around. Flips yeah, it around yeah. It'll be my day, you know. <laughs> and I get almost there, and then what happens is it went slack. Yeah, it went slack. It and tension. I fell out of the seat and Ooh. landed on the back of my neck. How are you alive? I don't know because this is this is <laughs> you know um, <laughs> Spider Man. Everybody gets one. <laughs> I'm I my I wasn't freaking out. I'm on the ground just trying to breathe. Yeah, you oh, can't feel anything anymore. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> you that fish and goes, <laughs> I look. <laughs> yeah, I roll my head and I see my grandmother who apparently saw the the event. <laughs> My grandmother loses her shit. <laughs> yeah. And that freaks me out. <laughs> He's like, what? He's like, what? Is the rest of my body facing downward? <laughs> that was funny until Gandy started crying. <laughs> you know, and they, they all 
This is a good story. Um, they, the paramedics came. They actually neck braced me, put <laughs> oh, me on a board, God. load me in a, uh, an ambulance. Uh, you know, you guys, loving... it's not that serious. Yeah. It's just a neck injury. <laughs> <laughs> See, Brandon, you had a loving grandma. My sister told me the story about when she and my older cousins were younger. One of my um, my second cousin that built the same cousin that built the ladder. He climbed up a or it, it was, remember, offender apparently. <laughs> I don't remember if it was him or his brother, but one of them climbed up into a tree and couldn't get down. And so my sister comes running in and goes, Grandma, Grandma, he can't get out of the tree. And so my grandma's just sitting there smoking, doing the crossword puzzle and going, Well, he shimmied his ass up there, he can shimmy his ass down. And my sister's like she's like six. <laughs> so she's like He could die and so she goes up to my cousin and he goes, What'd she say? He goes and she goes, Um well, um, she said you got your um butt up there and um you can get it down. And he's just like, What? I need help. Oh, <laughs> I guess he went there for like a few hours after that. Jeez. Then finally grandma came out with a beer can and chucked it at him. <laughs> <laughs> I fell out of the tree. Hey, if you drink beer I, I would believe it. <laughs> Alright, um oh, man. So, uh real quick switching out of childhood tragedies. <laughs> um and traumas. Which are close calls. Yeah, Doctor Who. Um, we all just watched The Day of the Doctor, Paul McGann's Return to the Doctor, which I've been waiting forever to see that. The Night of the Doctor. Well, yeah, The Night of the Doctor. Oh, my God, 50th anniversary. Now, I don't know. I'm still looking up theaters, but it's getting a limited release in theaters in America. I wanted... Oh, the, uh, the, the Senecino Theater. They have posters for it. They have posters. They have posters for it. Yeah, posters for it. We talked to them. It, they're not showing it. Not it's going to be it. in Temecula. The Temecula. Uh, we asked about it because we, we went and saw Thor earlier so, this week. Yeah, so did I. I'm so shocked. I haven't seen it. Oh, and, um, I haven't either. They, we saw the posters, and he and I were just freaking out. Like, like we, we were, were there to see Thor. I'm the, Mar- you know, I'm a Marvel, not really a Marvel fanboy, but I'm just like, I'm in Thor mode. And all the of one sudden, thing that can pull him out is the Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like screaming like a little girl in the lobby, like. <laughs> the Basically, what I did. He's walking around, going, Thor, Marvel, Thor, Marvel, Thor, Marvel, British Doctor, right there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, me and my friend were walking through, and we were skipping. We're like, gonna see Loki, and we stop in front of the poster, and we're like, wait. Wait, this is more important. <laughs> yeah, we, we, Asgard can take a back seat to this. <laughs> we sat there and it looked at that poster forever. You see Bad Wolf written in the background. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, oh my God, all that great Doctor stuff. And I can't wait for the 50th. I'm sitting there seeing I'm if I can take you without anyone noticing. <laughs> oh, um, but we're going to try to get to see it in theaters. I want to try and see it. Ryan's Comics in Temecula is doing a showing. present a showing. We might be there. Um, for that, if if we don't get to see it in theaters, but I'm I'm psyched. It's uh, I'm, I I know two two very kind ladies that they have BBC America, and if I don't get to see it in the theaters or make it up to Ryan's, they're like steal our TV. I'm like, you really want this to happen? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Of course, my wife was sitting there going, now I'm the one that needs the beer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, fifty years of the Doctor just so badass that a science fiction show even though it did have a break it's not 50 years continuous it went off the air in i think 89 89 89. came back for the paul mcgann movie in 96 96. with eric roberts as the master that was kind of oh we just recently rewatched it it doesn't really hold up no the him is the dark i was like i was like the master somebody please but not eric roberts because i've seen him in all those like good fella type movies stuff i'm like you're not the master you're the mobster he does (laughs) play well the problem with his version of the master is the master is very machiavellian He's just this mm-hmm. pure evil incarnate who's always got a plan and a backup plan and a contingency. And the Master always somehow wins. That's just The Doctor will def- to beat every other opponent. But the Master in him have this... The like, Doctor just survives. Yeah, the Doctor yeah. survives the Master. And he doesn't really come off as that Machiavellian of a villain or... Because uh, he, he starts off almost Terminator esque yeah. when he takes over the as the master, very cold, very calculating, very manipulative, and then turns into this very flamboyant villain by the third act. Yeah, which makes no sense, especially for that for the master because he's he he always stayed that cold, calculating type of person almost. 
Well, there's some flamboyance, well, some of the course, theatrics. Of course, I mean, making that his dominant feature was, a, I think, a big the, mistake. The for that Master's movie. first appearance, he had a cape, just like uh, <laughs> the Third Doctor. Um, All bad guys have capes in the beginning. <laughs> That's why I think the Third Doctor, no uh, no the capes. first Master, <laughs> no was capes. my favorite. Yeah. Well, we know who his fashion designer was then. Although by Ten's run, the Master is flamboyant again. Yes. Oh yeah. So, well, because that, that scene with the gas mask—that yeah. was that was the best. <laughs> I think that's one reason why he was my ma- my favorite Master because he's like the guy's dying. He's like, and he's giving him the thumbs yeah. up, like you're gonna die. It's great. <laughs> the guy's just looking like why? And he's like, why are you doing this? He's like, I'm evil. Give him a thumbs up. I'm evil. I'm evil. <laughs> oh, I thought that that Master though, I really liked him because. I think because oh, they they disclosed that over the years he's had that r- that drumming in his head for all those years, mm-hmm. so of course he's going to slowly go in more and more insane. And at that point, they're trying to say that that was the peak of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and that the drumming does go back to classic Who too. Exactly. It, it's not and he's always heard the he... drumming, and it's just something that's built inside of him. Wait, I'm going to have the drumming going on in my head. She's going to be laying in bed. With Brandon, Brandon's gonna open his eyes. What's that noise? And he's gonna be like, "No, I hear it." She's like, "It's me." Oh, <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to bring back a dead planet. <laughs> Woo! Go to sleep. I hear the drums. <laughs> but uh, I'm so excited. Paul McGann return, even if it was just for six minutes. Six minutes. Oh, we got to I see. I wish he would have got Paul a little bit. Of, I wish he would have got a little bit of a series because he was so good. Well, they were originally trying to... The, it was supposed to become an American show with yeah. Paul McGann. Have you seen the, the Doctor Who, the movie? Mm-hmm. Um, it's Paul McGann's uh, only turn as the Doctor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they brought in Sylvester McCoy, who's the, the um, oh. two, seventh. Yeah, who are, they actually brought him in for the regeneration and some other stuff. So he, he opens the film as Sylvester McCoy. Oh. And then, which ties right into classic series yeah 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 and then about seven or eight minutes into that movie he has probably the most violent death the doctors ever had in oh yeah that's right I in about continuity that. even when they showed it recently on bbc they edited it um because and i understand why because the way he dies in it, it was the first time an american company had the rights to doctor who it was american production and so of course we gotta glorify it. We we do glorify it. <laughs> what happens is the TARDIS lands, the door opens up, and the Doctor steps out in the middle of a gang war, and gets shot to shit. Hello, but, America. I'm uh, the Doctor. Kill it. Kill it with everything we got. <laughs> gets just shot to shit by like Tommy guns. Oh my God. And the blood, 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 blood splattering, and he drops, and somehow he still has enough. To, to life. life to actually have a couple of lines after that. <laughs> Sass die. But they... they <laughs> yeah, it's McCoy. They, they reference uh, him... Deliver this letter. <laughs> <laughs> they reference this event in uh, one of the last seasons with, uh, Dave, with Matt Smith when he's in the White House, when he meets Nixon. Hmm. He's sitting there with his feet up on the white chair, or uh, in the White, off, white House, um, with his feet up on the like the... The desk. The congressional desk or whatever. The and president's desk. The president's desk. Keep it simple. And, um... What I was ha- okay with desk. Yeah, what happens is, like, they pull guns on him, and he's still sitting there smug, and River Song pops out of the TARDIS and goes, They're American! And he puts his hands up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah! It's a, it's a reference oh, to the okay. to him Last being time shot. Americans, ah. they... Yeah, they're an American. <laughs> <laughs> not happening. Not having that again. <laughs> nope. But he has one of the, Sylvester McCoy goes out at one of the worst deaths ever, and it's technically not the shooting that kills him, because they rush him to emergency uh, surgery, and he's trying to explain. He's like, "I'm an alien. My anatomy's different." And they, you only need to fix one heart. They put him under, and they do open heart surgery. Not and heart. <laughs> the doctor gets lost in the system, and it's because they were unfamiliar with his anatomy that he died on the operating oh, table. Hold on, there's two hearts here, guys. What are we... Look at the size of that spleen. I don't even think that's a spleen. Is there's, it supposed to be that shade of magenta? Does anything else? <laughs> <laughs> um, Get the nurses out of here! <laughs> but they uh, they have this... Uh, there's a great x-rays where you see two hearts. Mm. 
and they took like three or four x-rays like it's still coming up double exposed <laughs> you know and it's just this great the movie is really well done it's not well loved by fans because it's not really traditional doctor yeah. well for the longest time it wasn't accepted as canon right it no it was always accepted as canon because it sylvester mccoy yeah, yeah because they showed mccoy yeah, he, he opens it murdered. as the cop stuff <laughs> yeah but because McCoy came back and did the movie, it, it's always been accepted as canon. But mm-hmm. it was this one shot, nineteen ninety six. I liked it. It was supposed to be a backdoor pilot to reboot Doctor Who, but as an American show. As an American show, it never. <laughs> so it, Americans have been rebooting things that long. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, we're it bad. Oh god. <laughs> um, and it just it didn't work. Um, what really hurt that movie was originally it was supposed to be a theatrical release and they um, bumped it to TV and well they didn't have a choice Steven Spielberg made that call Spielberg made that call Spielberg originally had the rights to Doctor Who he was going to do this big movie huh. and um, he got you're the, my James Bond my two hearted alien um, he got <laughs> the script and Steven Spielberg very famously said well because the script was set in World War II the Doctor meets Churchill some of what has happened in the got news, turned into Matt Smith stuff. You got turned into Matt okay. Smith stuff. Um, and he does know Churchill kind of. Yeah, stuff. He, oh, well, yeah. he knows Churchill very well now. Yeah. Um, but there's this. Uh, Spielberg said, "Well, I've made that movie. It was called Indiana Jones." Um, <laughs> and Spielberg walked away from the project, and that's when it lost all the. It had it money. It, it had steam. backing. It all. And so, just to keep it alive, they turned it into a TV production. Hmm. And it. it there's, I have a whole documentary just on the, just on the movie, on the '96 movie, and it's is really it, it's well done. He does play a pretty cool doctor, and there is some pretty cool action. Beats that prequel cool made me fall in love with him all over again. Well, yeah, because like, why didn't you get a show? <laughs> what I loved is in when he first appears because Paul McGann, if you've seen the, the movie, he's got long red hair. He's got this mm-hmm. ridiculous orange wig. Yeah, and. Paul McGann hated it. He said in multiple interviews he would love to come back and play the Doctor as long as he didn't have to wear the wig. That was his one stipulation. What would be funny is if in the prequel he actually, like, he stands there and he Take takes the off. wig off. And he's like, I don't know why that's there. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was he didn't have the wig. His hair wasn't good. orange yeah. in the yeah. prequel. He's like, he's like, you, like, no, in the prequel he, like, he has the wig on. And he's just like, he rips it off before he starts talking to her. And he's like, ah, that thing's been uncomfortable for years. <laughs> well, I love it because he's wearing the exact same costume he wore in the movie. Which I thought his costume was really cool. Well, his costume is an updated version of Will Hartnell's costume. It's the exact same I costume. I always thought that, but I... I, I it's just a that. different color palette. Exact yeah. same... Mm-hmm. As the Victor- it. Yeah, exact same thing. <laughs> this as the- was blue and black. No, this one not. matches my skin tone much better. <laughs> well, there's a uh, in in the movie when he finds the clothes, he he's in the hospital. He's come. He regenerated a little bit slower because of the anesthesia and stuff they had him under. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but plus it, of how how close to death he was. They said yeah, that's supposed to be why he regenerated slowly too. He he even says like it almost didn't happen this time. Yeah, and so when he regenerates. He finds this part of the hospital that's been shut down. And they, there's talk of it like, well, you know, we have to conserve energy in the hospital. So they shut this wing of the hospital down. So Paul McGann's walking around naked in this hospital. And he finds like a locker with Halloween costumes in it. Hmm. And, and it that's is, in every hospital. Well, it is <laughs> Halloween time. It's, oh, yeah, that's true. It was. The, the, there's talk of, uh, or no, there was talk of a New Year's costume party yeah something like that yeah. and so he's opening rummaging through employees lockers and in the lockers actually the uh tom baker scarf <laughs> ah! nice. and he walks past he actually holds up the scarf at one point and goes nah <laughs> he's done it <laughs> and uh he he ends up putting together this uh will hartnell costume just yeah. a little different palette but when you see him in the night of the doctor his he's wearing that same costume but it's all tattered and torn up oh yeah because like, it's supposed to be during the time war yeah. Or, clo- or towards the end. Speaking of uh, Will Hartnell, we just saw, the pre- Grant and I just saw the preview for the movie that they're making. What was it called? Um, uh, an Adventure in Time and Space. Yeah, What's about that? it's a movie that they're making all about the creating the creation of Doctor Who. Doctor Who. And all the things that like almost 
stopped it from actually well, yeah, coming to the show. The show never almost didn't make it out. Yeah. They have there was a lot of stuff that almost stopped that show. Yeah. Who's the guy from Harry Potter? What's uh, David something. He's the guy who plays a Felch in Harry Potter. Yeah. He's playing Will Hart now. Yeah, he he's, looks he's like supposed, identical he's supposed to, to Will Hart. supposed to be showing up. Yeah, yeah, he's they also, said he, there was there used to there was a lot of rumors before they, they did this movie that he was going to show up mm-hmm. in the fiftieth. Yeah, I say well because he was also um, in Dinosaurs in Space or Dinosaurs on yeah. Spaceship. Yeah, he played the villain in that. Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's his name? Uh, I can't remember his name. I know it's David yeah. something, but something. He looks. You know, you know, you don't dress him up as Phil. She does look a little bit like him. He does. I we saw like we were watching the preview for it, and it's him. You know, dressed up like Will Hartnell, and we're we're just looking like, oh my gosh, we just you know, like looked at him real quick. Oh my gosh, it looks like Will (laughs) Hartnell. They paused the trailer like eight times. Like I'm telling you, it's him. (laughs) (laughs) They built a real TARDIS and they went and got him to do the movie. (laughs) Seriously, Uh, it looks identical, and it's it's all set in the '60s. They even said at one point. Because it's a BBC, they found one of the cameras that they actually shot nice. Doctor Who with in the basement. Oh, was wow. that in Africa too? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! Did you hear about that? Yeah, yeah. So much oh. of the stuff that they destroyed just for room. They're yeah. finding no, no. They didn't destroy it in for room. What happened was there was a Some fire. Were. There was a fire in BBC, and the first three seasons of our first couple of years of Doctor Who burned in this fire, mm-hmm. and there was episodes that had only aired once that got destroyed. And they're yeah. finding them through people's private collections. Yeah. 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 They, they found a collection in Africa. It was it was in, what, like Ghana or something? Yeah, and they, they were able to... That wouldn't obscure place to find a doctor. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's, and, like, and, it's like eight cereals found somewhere in Africa. Yeah, and was they, it buried under a mud hut? <laughs> <laughs> well, they re- digitally restored them. They're now putting them out on DVD for the first time ever. And what's great is because before these were found, uh, audio tracks of these episodes had survived. So, in the die-hard fan collections out there that exist before this, they have the audio. there were there was this episode, this episode, and then audio files okay. of the episodes that took place in between. How many? How but many it's people? episodes from Will Hartnell's run Ooh. and episodes from Patton Trotton's the section. Ooh. So there's two doctors who their early histories were destroyed. Could you imagine being owning that collection, listening to the audio, and it's like, what did it look like? Yeah, well, I've listened yeah. to some of those episodes, and it's frustrating. Oh, it's it is be. very frustrating. Like they never describe the monster, and they're just like, they're like, oh, it's grotesque. What do we do? <laughs> you what are we doing? You're like, what does it look like? Say Standing something. There, tentacles. Six feet what? Tall, covered in metal and tentacles. <laughs> yeah, well, they don't. They don't explain the monsters. And the worst part of it is, is like normally, you know, in classic, who, you know, when they go running down the halls. There's not really like an Alon Z, like, let's go. Yeah. You just hear footsteps, clink, 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 clink. clink. It's like, ah, oh, they're running again. And you're like, oh my gosh, words, give me words. The villain's running? Who's running? Who's <laughs> running? Who is it? And also, it's like, it's the doctor. Like, you're doing bets, it's a doctor. It's Ten bucks, it's a doctor. <laughs> also, you hear them stop like, Doctor, I found you. You've been standing here this whole time. <laughs> oh, damn it. It's probably not even good Foley footsteps, too. <laughs> It's like those ones that sound like it's a giant echoing air stairway. And he's like, yeah. I'm so glad we're outside. <laughs> <laughs> that was the problem with Classic Who. It was always stuck in three wall sets. And it yeah. made Who seem so much smaller than what it really was. And, you know, they did... This is my TARDIS. Oh, that's quaint. <laughs> yeah. I love the fact that... Not by much. <laughs> I love the Matt Smith, uh, his TARDIS is two stories. Like, when they added that second story... Oh. I was like, I saw, oh! I, I, I was like, that's perfect. Got rid of. I saw that, and I was like, it's perfect. It's awesome. I love mm. his... Because his, Matt Smith has had three TARDIS designs. He has. He had the one for his original... Uh, Regeneration. For, uh, when he first first played. season. Then when they did the break and he came back, he had the two-story TARDIS yeah. with the second season for with um, Amy and Amy. Rory. Mm-hmm. And then they had bunk beds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After that, they he did the. Um, You've got bunk with, beds with, and with two the beds snowman with a ladder. What more do you want? And <laughs> with his. Uh, the look on her face was so frustrating. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> with his now? third uh, Christmas special, he had a TARDIS that they was. Very close to the actual original TARDIS. It's supposed to be a modernized version of Will Hartnell's. Yeah, and it was, you could tell from There's the a lot Christmas of special, he, even his color palette, he was wearing... Um, How he looks now, he looks oh, so much like Hartnell. Yeah, they've been slowly making him look more like Hartnell throughout, ever since the last Christmas special. 
Which, you know, I'm fine with that, because I, I always loved how Hartnell was dressed. Hartnell was pretty cool. Although, if you he go back... to get rid of the fez and actually bust out Hartnell's hat, you know. Just... Yeah. Well, if you look at some of Hartnell, those older... Hartnell only wore that, like, one or two episodes. I know, but I loved it. Uh, and again, the fez isn't worn that much. It was only one Exactly. Worn. So... He wore it, I think, a couple of times. He's worn it a few yeah. times. Yeah. yeah. And many sods, but... Um, then he's got, well, of course, and he had that one episode with the Stetson. Yeah. Cool. Yes, that's it. <laughs> uh, Moffat has said it's a recurring gag. Anytime I give Matt Smith a hat, I take it away as soon as possible. <laughs> um, Here's my they're always cool. Bam. <laughs> you know, I wish they would add that gag in the comments. Here's my pork really pie. Would... No, I just want to see him put on a hat and have Stephen Muffet come up and just smack it off. Smack and it off. Like, he just, he <laughs> just walks no. on camera and he's like, <laughs> bad, no. bad doctor. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, okay, back into the fantasy. <laughs> and walks off set. <laughs> and I was like, well, that was... Weird. He's the doctor. He can break the fourth wall. <laughs> so, um, uh, some of my favorite episodes of Doctor Who don't really even have the doctor in it. Hmm. Was it Love and Aliens? Uh, Love and Monsters. Love and Monsters? Yeah. Oh yeah. my yeah. god. That's one of my favorites, and uh, the first time you see the Weeping Angels. Uh, oh, yeah. Blink. Blink. Yeah. That one was a really good one. I, I People tell... hyped it up too much for me. By the time I got oh, to it, I was just like... Yeah. I'm um, sorry. I really like it. The good thing for me is that I, I love it nonetheless. A lot of people ask me what what would be a good episode to to test out who. I tell them Blink, and they always come back and love it. Yeah. If that's you what, don't like Blink, you're not gonna like. That's the rest what we of the showed yeah. to Bonnie mm -hmm. as one of her first episodes was. Blink. Yeah, she said that, and she's like, she came back, and she's like, "Who's awesome?" I know. So like, right? I was like, right? angels aren't always there, and she's like, "Dang." It. <laughs> well, it's funny because uh, the first time I, um, my friend Christy oh, watched man. it, she, uh, you know. It was over, and she goes, I can never look at a Weeping Angel statue ever again. Yeah. Oh, what a lovely... My favorite movie. episode what of all time statue. is uh, Vincent and the Doctor. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. No oh. matter what happens in Doctor Who, it will mm. always be my favorite episode. I'm an artist, and I cry at the end yeah. of that episode. Oh, I cry so much. I was yeah. just like, I'm a... Like, just... I just... Yeah. So it just... Oh, it breaks never, me. It, it breaks me. Oh. For me, my favorite... One of my favorite episodes is The Lodger. I the know. Lodger. It, oh, because, that's a good one. Because not only do you have the typical Doctor Who, he's trying to figure out what's going on, but he's he has to know really little guy who's like, I want to tell my best friend I, I love her, but I can't. And he also, has, <laughs> but he also has to learn how to be a flatmate, which yeah. is really cool. Really I love really him. He's like, funny. he's like, what is this? And he's like, oh, gotta give you the short version. He headbutts him and he learns <laughs> yeah. everything yeah, about the Doctor. This is one of my favorite characters. And when he which came they've back, done in, in a oh, couple yeah. episodes. Like, I just love that, though. When he came back the second time, that same character, and you're like a kid and his wife. It's so funny. I, we'll call um, him Alfie. That was a, that Alfie. second one uh, was the first episode my niece Leah had seen, and she saw that and she laughs hysterically when the doctor is trying to get him not to look behind him. He's like, um, "Kiss me, I love you. Uh, give me a kiss." Uh, I, you know, he's like, "I haven't much had much practice, but I hear I'm really good." <laughs> they give that face. Oh my gosh, my ten year old niece laughed so she hard. Just lost it. She <laughs> lost it, and now wow. she's like, "What are we gonna watch more, Doctor Who?" You know, and that's what, one of the things I love yeah. as a writer, for, uh, you know, as a writer, I look at Doctor Who, and I look at, okay, from the very get-go, you have mixed couples, mm -hmm. you have gay themes. That are perfectly fine. That are perfectly <laughs> fine. And it, it's and the show is geared towards children. That's what it, it's geared towards. And it, it, I mean, it's, like, I look at Doctor Who, and I, their target audience in Britain is 8 to 13-year-old boys. That's the target demographic of Doctor Who. Oh, man. Jack, Jack Harkness got way creepier. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. He's so creepy now. Yeah. Well, why do you think he got the adult spinoff? <laughs> but, yeah, oh. it's cool because, you know, like I said, my youngest niece is really getting into it. And I, it was the coolest thing for me was I don't remember where Brandon and I were, but we were out doing some stuff. And I get a phone call from my niece Leah, and she goes, "Okay, I got a question about that episode. Turn left." And I'm like, "Oh, this is so awesome! He's watching yeah. it without me." You know? <laughs> oh, I was like, "Oh, you can ask me anything so you want. Creepy. You're my favorite niece ever." <laughs> you know? That episode's so creepy. See, my favorite one is like the most simple one I've ever seen. It's where they're stuck in. Um, it's not the one where they're stuck in traffic, but they're stuck in. A little ship that's on like, oh, the diamond. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, midnight. Midnight. Yeah. That is a midnight. really good yeah. one. That's midnight. the first time you see the doctor actually get worried. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he's he's like all out of options. Yeah. He's and usually you, so cool. You, you know? have no idea what this thing is, but it's terrifying. It yeah. reminds you can't me. Can't see it. <laughs> it reminds me of like an Agatha Christie book. Yes. It yeah, it really does. I love well, it. you know, besides the Agatha Christie. Besides the Agatha Christie. I looked it up and like 
her <laughs> having that time missing and running, that was real. Yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, they blew up history. That's awesome. <laughs> they always do that. That's why Ren and, and I said like we want to see an episode with um, Mark Poe. Tra- oh, well, Poe. Poe, at the end of his life, when he was just oh. down on the bench. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's like near like death. He disappeared for days. Because yeah. other, yeah. other writers have used him and stuff like that. Like, the most recent book I've seen him do, they do it, was uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. And they're saying that, yeah, Poe had become friends with the vampire, and the vampire... Yeah, but that's what we're saying. Him. Wouldn't it be so cool to have Doctor Who play on that? That'd well, be awesome. that'd be great. The one I want to see is, because as much as I love Doctor Who, and they've made an effort as the last couple of years to really do America, Yeah, I want to see a Twain... Uh, oh, episode. That would be cool. Not I think Mark Twain would be the one guy to drive the Doctor mad. Yeah. Well, <laughs> here's the thing: if you know Doctor, if you know Twain's history, him as a writer, there's a period in his life where after his wife died, Twain got really depressed, and he oh. wrote this book called The Dark Stranger, where it talks about this man who showed up and helped him, mm. and it ties in perfectly with. That'd be with awesome. a Doctor Who episode. That would be cool. And it'd it, be a great way to start off Capaldi. But yeah. yeah. Well, Capaldi's first episode is called Twelfth Night. Mm. They've already announced it. Uh, uh, um, okay, later on. Later, later on. on. Like a second or third episode. That's yeah. gotta happen. But like, there's, I'm a huge Twain fan, and it just because if you look at that period in Twain's life, Twain was contemplating suicide. Yeah. And this stranger walks into his life. And after the course of uh, some strange events... Um, Twice Twain disappeared for an unspoken amount of time. Well, uh, he didn't disappear. In but, a weird blue box. Yeah. I feel like the Doctor would have gotten stuck there with him. Yeah. But Twain, at the end of that Talk event, the circles. Twain, um, his faith in humanity is restored, and he lived... Like another twenty years after that, it's totally a Doctor Who theme. That's it really is. Something the it Doctor is. Would do. The only yeah. time the Doctor ever be- ever got somebody back in time and they weren't missing at all. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did it this time. Well yeah. then, oh, we're back <laughs> in time. <laughs> One for a thousand. Speaking of strange things, can you can you imagine like M C Escher getting stuck on the TARDIS somehow and rearranging everything? <laughs> <laughs> that would be perfect. Oh, I should I should I should email that to Stephen. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he up, they make he didn't make him jump off something, and really then they're like somewhere else. <laughs> be like right fixed. before he right before he hits, he's like, Psh, and I'm nowhere. <laughs> okay, uh, real quick, um, starting with Maylene. Oh. Favorite doctor, not favorite episode. Okay, favorite, favorite doctor. Okay, I've said this before, and I will stand by it. I love John Pertwee, the third doctor. Mm-hmm. And I, the reason why I love him is because. He, he was like one of the fir- one of the first doctors with a constraint. He couldn't leave Earth. He had a car named Bessie. I mean, oh, come on, that yellow, was yellow yellow car. car named Bessie. That car was cool. That is pretty cool. Not, I don't think it, uh, he knew martial art. He yeah, did. He, it was, he was the... like James Bond of the doctors. Okay, he, it, he if, was you know karate chopping. Him and Sean Connery used to get in fights. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, he if, taught Sean Connery. <laughs> if, if you know the history of the series, uh, at the third Doctor, that's when. Because the first Doctor, as great as he is, he's almost a side character in his own show. Yeah, mm-hmm. he really is. The second Doctor is more of a, a go-getter, but he's more of a practical... Pra- he's more of a jokester. And he is my second favorite. He's, he's <laughs> you know... But by the, the time, <laughs> by the time you get to the third Doctor, he is the James Bond hero. Something bad's going to happen, the Doctor's going to fix James it. James Bond walks into <laughs> unit and they're like, this is your martial arts teacher. He will teach you everything that you need to be a double O agent. And it's the Doctor who's like, first of all, the gun's your last, your last resort. What do you mean? Gadgets! Gadgets everywhere! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, wasn't he also the first one with a uh, screwdriver? Yeah, is the yeah. first one to use first a sonic screwdriver. Yeah. The second Doctor had a flute. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was pretty was it cool. Sonic? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It made noise, so I mean, that's a type of Sonic. That's Sonic. That's Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's the word Sonic itself. That's, that's a type that's... of Sonic. <laughs> Not but, really. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I liked it because I think by the time the third Doctor comes around, you're really okay, fully understanding who the Doctor is, and they're really starting to hit their stride as to what he does. You know, and I, I like the fact that. I mean, yes, I, I get that the one of the greatest appeals to Doctor Who is that he travels, and yes. that he goes to all these alien planets and sees all these people, but it's like, what would the Doctor do if he got stuck on Earth 
for an extended period of time. He know? was going insane. He he was he had the TARDIS. He couldn't. But it didn't travel. <laughs> yeah. It, it was stuck. It was a paperweight in Unit's office. Yep. <laughs> and so it's basically him just trying to pass time until he can. He had leave. a paycheck. He yeah. was on. Uh, <laughs> he was on payroll. He was yeah, on payroll, payroll. <laughs> which they reference in uh, a, a David Tennant episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they give like you got some like they say something like you got back pay or something coming to you. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you used to work for these guys. It was the seventies. <laughs> or the sixties. I can't keep it straight. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they're like, you got some back pay coming. <laughs> So, yeah, I think that's why I like the third one so much. And the cape thing. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah we talked about the cape earlier. Cape. No capes. You know? And, like I said, that's when you meet the master. And that's my favorite master is that, that one. The first first one. I can't remember his name right now. But. Oh, so, so, so good. So he was great. Typical mustaching, twirling villain. Uh, yeah, I think that's why I liked it. It's cause I was like, have you met my cousin Snidely? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Mike, your favorite doctor. Uh, a lot of people are going to call me bandwagon it, but it, it's David Tennant. David Tennant. I I just there's something about oh well, there's much love for David Tennant in this. There's house. there's there's I, I know there's it, it seems almost bandwagon because yeah. when Tennant came around, that's when Doctor Who got super big again. Because you know Chris Reggleson was was the reopener and the reintroduction, and mm-hmm. then David Tennant everybody's like, oh my gosh. But I just thought he I, I, his go get attitude, his never sir, his never say die stuff. He always he, there's just something about him. Plus, I'd re- I didn't know what Alan Z meant for a long time, so I lift it up, and it's like, let's go. Oh, great, that's awesome. Here's I am sometimes... And his last words made so much oh, more I know. sense. Oh, I don't want to go. Re- I rewatched, because it means let's go, and then his very last words are, I don't, don't want to go. go. I don't want to go. And like, because I, like, I found that out, rewatched into time, and he said that, and I was like, You really no! my soul out, yeah. put it on it, and then thrown it back in my body. I don't want to go. I was like, I was like. This is the realm of okay. Oh, okay. This is that no. line. <laughs> what about David Tennant's analogy of the regeneration process? Because he never really oh, talks about oh, it. Oh yeah. Like the, he's never talked about it until David Tennant. He's like, he's like I, he pretty much says he's like, I die. It's and, like I do get, I die, but I get to see another man walk, walk away. away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I, like, I was oh. like, I was like, no, but you know, whenever with the whole Davros thing, and he gets he gets shot, and I'm like, no, this is too soon. Yeah. This is too soon. Then yeah. he focuses it on. He stays himself and he focuses on the hand. I was like, why didn't you do that in the end of time? Cut your hand off and then <laughs> have, just do what you did last time. Oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> Wilfred, I'm sorry. that He's such a good companion. Oh. Anybody, everybody's like, oh, Rose this, Sergeant, Sergeant Smith oh. this. I'm like, Wilfred. <laughs> Wilfred, Wilfred, I mean, bitch. come on. He, he got everybody onto a bus. Okay, it's a bunch of elderly, elderly people. But he's like, we're gonna go find this guy. <laughs> and he he so yeah, he's awesome. really awesome. He I did. loved him. My my second favorite is the fifth. The fifth, yeah. David Peterson. I've, I've been messing names up all day. Peter Davison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a novel see? of Peter Davison. Yeah, Peter Davison. I've been messing it up so bad. He's the one with he, the celery. He oh, was a vegetable. Yeah. Right. Me, I'm wearing a vegetable. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he was my second favorite. And they actually give a reason for the celery. In, in Doctor Who, he can actually eat it, and it, it's an anti-poison. Nice. It, it's the same reason why... As when, most celery is. David, <laughs> David Tennant does the peanuts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I need to, and to expel... Oh, yeah. Salty. The, yeah. the, 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 you know, and I need a shock to myself. He goes through that same process in... Uh, his last episode, it, it's a tearjerker because uh, his him and his companion were both poisoned, and he gives the antidote to his companion and oh, then dies yeah. and regenerates. And the very end of that episode is Colin Baker's first appearance as the Doctor, the Sixth Doctor, cool. and his first words were, "Were you expecting someone, someone else? else? So oh, arrogant, so <laughs> just jackass." Yeah, yeah. He was my second, and then I found out, you know. His daughter Mary, David Tennant, and all this stuff. I was like, "Holy crap!" It's kind of weird that I like them both now. Yeah, and if you actually, he's such great stuff. He's a good dog. I need something salty. What is that? Here, this. What is that? Salt. Too salty. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite doctor is the sixth doctor, Colin Baker. He's great. He's also very different from the he's every other massive, doctor. He's a massive abstract. He's well. He's angry. Uh-huh. He's very angry. Mm-hmm. And the way Colin Baker played it, he even talked about it. He goes, "You, if you stop and think about the sheer people who have died in this man's life, yeah. friends, companions, we don't even know because when Will Hartnell takes off, he's a grandpa. But he's, We've never even met his daughter. Yeah, in the entire fifty years of 
of continuity, we still don't know hardly anything about this character. We've yeah. never met his wife. We've never met his daughter. And is it a fact that he had a daughter and not a son, or uh, oh, we don't even know. Yeah. I didn't know that. We don't know. <laughs> that was new to me. <laughs> we don't know if it was a no, son. No, he, he, he has a daughter. He has. He has. Well, he's a granddaughter. That's no, not he's her. not a daughter. The doctor's daughter. Oh, yeah. Not her. She doesn't yeah. count. She doesn't count. Why not? She's cool. Well, the she's clone. cool, but she's, she's not also like... David Tennant's wife. Yeah. yeah. I, I really and got the feeling that they were going to... And his daughter. And his daughter. Apparently, Galfrey's in the south yeah. end of the universe. <laughs> All planets but have a north. But he's got an accent from the north, so, you know. What is what is the place south of the north. north. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, he was just so angry, and he just so... Vi or he had so much anger. And the thing is, this is where production and the actor really clashed with the Sixth Doctor. Because they gave him this bright, multicolored 80s outfit. Mm -hmm. And when you it ask... Really very grim. When correctly. you ask Colin Baker, he said he wanted pretty much what uh, um, uh, Christopher Elkelson had. He said, I want... The U-boat captain. I want a leather jacket. I want... He goes, I want to be dressed in black. He, he wanted to play it like Hamlet. Brooding and angry. <laughs> Could you imagine he? But he like he goes too far like into the eighty stuff. He's like he's the doctor. And he's like, where's your sonic screwdriver? I have sonic brass knuckles. <laughs> uh, well, the doctor, time to feel my pain. The, that the sixth doctor is pretty violent in some of those oh, yeah. episodes. There's an episode where a Cyberman crushed a dude's hand, and there was blood. One of the rare times Doctor Who showed blood. Hmm. Scared the crap out of Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, people bleed. People bleed in the Doctor Who universe. <laughs> no, this is uh, not good. I'm reading Batman. <laughs> nothing bad happens. Nobody ever gets shot ever <laughs> in Batman. That's eight. That was like 18. It's like, I'm going to go watch 18. They unload no, AK-47. They don't even hit the barn. Uh, but no, it's, it's, it's Doctor Who's right. There's a, the, the, what's considered the greatest six Doctor series. And it is, it, you know, because Classic Who is 30 minutes long. And yep. they take four to five episodes to tell one story. Mm -hmm. So basically every story in Classic Who is two to four hours long. Um, but like there's an episode called The Trial of the Time Lords that is almost 20 episodes long yeah. just by itself. And it's, it's insane because what happens is it starts off with the Doctor being put on trial by the Time Lords. And... His uh, opposing counsel is the master. <laughs> um, talking about the master. But oh, what, wait, this is the pro this is the prosecutor. Whoa, whoa, whoa! And that's how we found out his companion was killed. Was they did a flashback to her death, and they kept showing all these atrocities the doctor had done throughout his lifespan. And he has this great monologue talking about the time lords, and he goes. Forget Daleks. Forget Cybermen. <clears throat> he goes, 10,000 years of pure ego. That's what it takes to create pure evil. And he denounces his own people. Okay. Um, and this is a man who, if you go by the Fifth Doctor, by the end of the Fifth Doctor's run, yeah. they voted him for High Council of Gallifrey. <laughs> yeah, that's true, they did. Um, at the end of the Five Doctors, that's what they do. They, they elected him uh, uh, head of the whatever title of, of the head. council the council yeah but well you know you you can see how dark they've become at the end of time uh, during the end of time special mm -hmm. because it shows like the, the head of the council time he's like I'm he's he's like I'm not gonna die he's he's completely egotistic he's like I'm not gonna die because of the doctor I'm living mm -hmm. he's like I don't care what the cost is and I was like but you got the gauntlet <laughs> yeah. That the, gauntlet's scary. Yeah, the, the one naysayer gets like vaporized. Oh yeah. Well, that gauntlet is also supposed to to grant more regenerations. And yeah. Bring, and bring oh. time lords back from the from the. That's dead. how they brought back the master. Oh, yeah. God. He used the he used the gauntlet to bring back the master, but it what, it happened imperfect for, for some reason. I can't remember why. Well, they messed with his regeneration to keep him that keep way. him under control. Yeah, but. He was still he was really good in that though. The, yeah. the scene where there it was like a, it was like a uh, mason it was like a, a like a gravel uh, pit or something like the him and David Tennant's dialogue there that was really good. Going back to the sixth Doctor. I'm sorry about that. That's all right. The sixth Doctor is the only Doctor to actually fix the Chameleon circuit too. <laughs> no, he was he was he fixed the Chameleon circuit, mm -hmm. and the idea is it lands and it's supposed even from Episode One the TARDIS is broken. I love that. Yeah. Um, if you've ever watched an unearthly child, they talk about that. In fact, that's what gets them in trouble, 
is the navigation systems wonk, wonkers, and they end up going into the past, and they can't get back to the right time. <laughs> and that's why they're going through the trying to get the these teachers who ended up stowing away back to the, their mm -hmm. own time. But anyway, Colin Baker, Sixth Doctor, fixes the circuit, but the TARDIS, as we know, is, is a living entity and doesn't care for that situation. So, like, the TARDIS would land in a junkyard. He would step out, and then the TARDIS would turn into this giant or uh, piano. Yeah. Or it'd turn into, mm -hmm. like, a Roman pillar. Yeah. yeah. And so he ended up re-breaking it just to, yeah. because it was drawing more attention to yeah. itself than the blue box on the corner. It's like no <laughs> perception filter in the universe will help you. It's uh, one of those things. It's like your, it's like no perception filter made will help you now. <laughs> so, um, Next. all right, uh, what's your, who's your favorite doctor? Uh, well, unfortunately, it's already been said, and it's going to be the tenth doctor, David Tennant. But Matt Smith wrote on me more than I ever expected him oh, to. I really like. Him. Have you seen the image of uh, the? Uh, Matt Smith's last episode because they're at the Christmas special is his regeneration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there it's called the Fall of the Eleventh. I saw that image. I started crying because it's him laying down on his face with it half regenerating. Oh, oh I did God. see that picture. I did oh, see that picture with the, the yellow smoke or the yellow gas coming yeah. off. Ah, oh. my sweet. <laughs> I'm just wondering if he's going to do that weird scream face he did when he turned went from Matt when it when it went from David Tennant to Matt Smith like he comes in he's like ah and he's like that nose turns like that perfect point on the screen yeah I was like if he does that face again I, I don't know if I can cry so uh, uh David Tennant uh favorite episode from David Tennant uh, yeah you said sure. ten's your favorite ten's my favorite from ten probably just honestly the First, well, not the first episode we see him in, but the second one. Uh, what's it called? Um, um, isn't that the New New York one? No. no. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's after New Earth. Yeah, it's. Uh, oh God, what is it? Sorry to interrupt this podcast, but I gotta ask Brandon here a question. Do you like teddy bears possessed by angels? I love teddy bears possessed by angels. Then do I have the book for you? It's Mister Cuddles, a wonderful comic from Destiny Comics. And his second episode is um, is his first episode's the Christmas Invasion. Christmas, Christmas Invasion. Which okay, that was really is New good. Earth. Then it is New Earth. It, yeah, yeah, New Earth with the cats. Yeah, they're at, they're at, it's New New York. Well, technically, it's New 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 York. Yeah, the um, reemergence of uh, what's that villain? The face. The face of Bo. Um, no, well, no. The, uh, oh, yeah, no. the face of Bo's in um, that. What's her face? But re, uh, uh, oh, most um, yeah, oh, the uh, last woman from Earth. La the last, supposed to be uh -huh. the last real human. Um, uh, Cassandra. 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 Lady I just Cassandra. feel like that Lady episode, Cassandra. we got to know who David Tennant was as a doctor. Yeah. So I love it when they, they hit him with the, the foam, the cleaning. Oh, yeah. and he's just he's just uh. taking a shower. He's like, oh, and they hit Rose. She's like, what's going on? <laughs> 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 stop. Yeah, I just feel like you get you right away know who he's going to be. You know, you know what his part is as a doctor. Well, I think he knew who what he wanted to do as the doctor because when they yeah, asked, he didn't in the first episode. Who are you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> am I am I a brave man? Am I a coward? And, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just love the face he has. Like I don't know. And but I love really it long face. when he not when I mean I don't like that he kills the guy. I mean it's like because that's not completely the doctor. But he knocks me. He goes. He's like no second chances. That's the kind of guy yeah. I am. And I was yeah. like, then you're gonna be awesome. Yeah. He, well, the doctor does kill. I mean. There's a great, oh, yeah. every single doctor, every single they've, incarnation. They've all killed at least one. Mm -hmm. You know, going even to Will Hill. Everyone gets one. <laughs> Everyone gets one. Yeah. Um, they take a little bit more, usually, but, you know, <laughs> just one. But Will, you're not the doctor unless you've eviscerated one person. <laughs> I mean, it, even going back to Dinosaurs in Space, when Matt mm -hmm. Smith, you know, yeah. had his moment. Him. He had his. Oh. Yeah. I yeah. just want to say real quick, Dinosaurs on Spaceship, I love that line. Dad. I'm 30-something years old. I don't have a Christmas list. I, I do! do. <laughs> He's in the background. Like, I yeah. do! Oh, I love, I love that. Yeah, who's got a list? Okay, Lewis, favorite doctor. Uh, okay. 
Nine was the very first one that I saw, so for the longest time he was my favorite. The U boat captain. It took me it took me a long time to get over nine going to ten. I just recently rewatched Chris Eccleston. Uh, I, like I rewatch it at yeah. least once a month. Yeah. Oh my god. I, I so know I I love my, my, I love the, I can never remember the name of the episode with one of my favorites what, with the boys, Are You My Mummy? I can never oh, remember the name uh, of it. It's a two parter um, Yeah, that, those it's, two episodes. The second one I think is the Doctor Dances. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the second, second one is the Doctor Dances, I think. Boomtown is it's, what it is? I think it's Boomtown. Think Boomtown it's, and Doctor Dances. Yeah, that that uh, those are my yeah. two favorite episodes. Do you know what episode uh, uh, he told Just as once Just as once everybody lives. I was like, he didn't lie. No, he didn't, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the one time. The one episode in Chris Eccleston's run that the first time I watched it, I was like, meh. Was the third episode with uh, Dickens? That was a good one. But oh. recently rewatching it, I was like, "Oh my god!" I just like couldn't believe how how well it was done. Yeah. How how was the chick that plays Gwen is in it? Yeah, but they, they actually reference that in Torchwood. She's talking about all the weird stuff that's ha- that's happening right now, and she's like, "It's always happening." She's like, and then she talks about this relative she had in the in the late eighteen hundreds who just who said who said she said something about like ghosts or anything, and then she's like, and then she di- and then she died. Mm-hmm. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, like it. it they always make reference. They usually make reference. Yeah. To be honest, stuff. when my friends were first trying to get me into Doctor Who, and they showed me Chris Eccleston's first episode, I'm like, I can't get through this. I can't even watch the whole episode. And one it's, day I was like, I'm gonna try again, and I didn't leave my TV for at least seven hours. <laughs> it, that first episode uh, is is a tough. He's gay. She's nearly. It is a tough episode <laughs> because it 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 doesn't really set the the standard. No. It, it, it's great, and I've rewatched it several times, and it's an amazing opener. Mm-hmm. It's but more it's a Rose than Doctor. It's more about the Rose. It's a soft sell. Yeah, yeah, is what it really is. I and, think it works though. And my the first episode I ever saw was the David Tennant episode where he meets the devil. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. that was a good. Oh my god, I forgot and, about that episode. If you see Rose, oh. if you see Rose, tell her I. Yeah, she knows. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I saw that episode, that two parter, and I was just completely blown away. And then, like, a year passed me by, and I was at Comic-Con with a buddy of mine who is from England, and we walked past the Doctor Who booth, and he was a sword fighter, we were both there as sword fighters at Comic-Con, and uh, I said, oh, Doctor Who, and I mentioned, I don't even remember what I said, because my only experience at the time was the, the he devil He threw his episode. sword on him. <laughs> it, was, it was the devil episode. Like you do. And when you insulted him, I mean, what I was going to do, just let him get away with it? Yeah. <laughs> My buddy from England turned to me and goes, you realize it's a kid's show, right? And it just blew me away. I went back. I've watched every single episode. It helped me get through my bachelor's. Yeah. It really did. It's, it's what got me through my bachelor's program was Dr. Who. Um, uh, honestly, going back to what you said earlier, the kind of soft sell first episode, mm-hmm. I think... It kind of had to be because you were dealing with a whole new generation there was of people a lot of who had never seen any plus of Plus the old fandom. Yeah, yeah plus yeah. the old fandom. If you tried so you too kind of hard. Had to please, kind of, both, it would be kind of hard. But you had, you kind of had to make it so that people became interested again. And for the people who didn't know it, you know, kind of Of course, his to. first words are really good. I'm the doctor. What, what's your name? What's Tyler? Nice to meet you, Rose Tyler. Now run for your life. Yeah. Now run, run for, for your life. life. I and, love that part. And, and I mean, that's that was one of the reasons why I liked Nine was he was... He was unlike any character I'd ever really seen before, but it's ten. It has to be ten for me. Ten. It's going to be ten. Well, he he runs the whole gamut of emotions for me. Like he starts off being kind of funny, kind of hilarious and weird, and then he has such can. intense respect and admiration for humanity, oh, yeah. and, and then he loses it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a thing. Well, for a long time he uh, lo- he he saw humans as the greatest potential in the universe. Yeah. Because he, he's like he's like look at you you. You have all this stuff happen, and you're still here. You're still yeah. doing this. It's amazing. You're great. And then the prime minister blew up the cigarette ship, and he's like, "I should have given another warning." Yeah, run because the humans are coming. God. And it's like, oh, it's he doesn't this, like humans. Anymore. It's this awesome duality. Like he knows that humans have potential, but he also knows how bad we can be. Well, he's he's like, you guys could be awesome and great and awesome, but at the same time, you guys could be Lucifer himself. And I met the guy. <laughs> There's a great episode with the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker. We haven't even mentioned in this whole podcast. He's the, the <laughs> most iconic. Like yeah. He's the most iconic of the doctors. We are in Hemet, California. <laughs> if you want, if you're a Hoovian and you want to flog us, we're at Brandon's house. Yeah. Um, but he's <laughs> not he's, me. I'll be at my mother's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just send your hate mail. Um, send your hate mail care of. <laughs> but he he's the the fourth doctor has this great episode with Sarah Jane, where they're in a space Sarah station, Jane. in the far flung future. 
And he's in, he, they come out and there's these humans in these pods. And the, the idea is the, the human Earth is, this is after Earth blew up Eccleson. with Eccleson. And there's these, uh, these space stations. With, it's a future episode in the past. <laughs> in the past, where these humans are on ice traveling from one point to another. And Eccle, uh, Tom Baker gives this beautiful oh, monologue oh. about how humans, so amazing. It wasn't that long ago that you climbed out of the muck and evolved into you know what you are today and uh you're now stepping out into the stars and you're now tv dinners <laughs> uh, so that's kind of an interesting thing for tom um, yeah tom, for the fourth doctor to say i okay. had a half moment brain fart sorry i can't remember who we're talking about anyway because he as you know the, the actor started off as a monk and so, and then after that, he kind of became, what was it, did he become atheist? He's or? an atheist, yeah. Yeah, he became a you know, full-on atheist after that. And um, so it's, I like the whole, you guys climbed out of the goo not too long ago, you know, because to me it's kind of funny because it kind of contradicts what he, as a person, used to believe. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know. But it's it's such a, it's so well-written, Doctor Who is so well-written. Oh, yeah. Um, and they actually remember canon, unlike other shows. And I, I oh, have yeah. such huge respect for something that will remember its past. Like, oh well, uh, so oh, our kids, even our the bad kids will be like, well, yeah. our kids will be like, Dad, this show is awesome. It's great. It's like, dude, you are you way behind. No idea. <laughs> here's, <laughs> here's a fifty year backstock. I'm too young. <laughs> You've stolen my innocence. <laughs> um, in in the Adipose episode. Oh, I love that. Episode. There's a lot of references to classic Who. Oh, in yeah. the adipose episode, but there's a scene where he's looking at the adipose. He's like, "Oh, it's all made of different parts. I used to have an umbrella, just like you," <laughs> which is a reference to the sixth doctor yeah. who had an umbrella made of multiple different colors. Yeah. And you know, talking about Pasta. our favorite doctors, I, I, can't, I the whole time I keep thinking the doctors are a lot like the episodes. There really isn't a bad one. There are just ones you like less than others. Exactly. You know, yeah, like, that's true. there's really, at least as far as I've seen, there has not been a bad, straight up bad episode that I was like, that is horrible. You know, like, I, obviously there are episodes I, I love and prefer over other episodes, but I've never yet seen one where I was like, no, that, that they totally yeah. missed the mark and they should never show that again. Well, you know? yeah. one thing, so many people, they tell me they, uh, they don't like her, it's, but I like this stuff with Donna Noble. Donna, um, I love Donna. Donna. Like so many people I have met are just like, she was a mistake. They should have no. heard that show. I'm like, no, no. he was looking for a mate, a somebody to just pal around with, and Someone she the was the one. <laughs> yeah, she's... I need a mate. You need you a mate? mate. No, I need a mate. You need a mate with me, Martian. She's not with me, Mister. No, a mate. A <laughs> mate. <laughs> she's a complete juxtaposition from the last two companions, oh, yeah. who which fell in love with. Yeah, they both yeah. did. Like you with know? Rose, you can understand it, but with the second companion, whose name is so forgettable that I literally have forgotten it quite often. Martha. Martha, Martha, Martha Jones. Thank you. Martha. Yeah. Yeah. There's some mad love for Martha in this. I, I, I oh, like God. Martha. I don't, yeah. I don't like her that much. If you think about it, Rose was the yeah. girl. Was that was the girl of his dream. They were they were together, and he's like, you know what, I'll be with you as long as I can, you know, because I know what's going to happen. But then he, she's lost, so it's like, you know, losing your girlfriend, and then you have that friend that's always had the crush on you, but you don't know they exist. That's Martha. Yeah. Here's the thing about Martha. Martha's the one who got to tell off the doctor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, you yeah. know, I'm not going to wait around for you to realize how awesome I am. Yeah, that's Which true. Was, and yeah. then she married Mickey Smith. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, which Mickey kind of had his own interesting arc, but like out of all the companions, he evolved he has, a lot in the series. He did, he did but yeah. out of all the companions, I think he kind of went. Like, we didn't get to see. He went from Mickey the Idiot you know? to Savior of Two Worlds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. So, but there's I mean, a if you, you know. guys ever there's a great band called uh, Chameleon <laughs> Circus. <laughs> love Chameleon. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. we, we love Sarah, Sarah loves Chameleon Circuit. Oh my Circuit. god, Chameleon Circuit. Circuit. I have like a, I have little CDs on my computer. When I feel bad, I literally put on uh, the uh, the Traveling Man Will Save the Day. Yeah. And I feel better for the rest of my life. That's about Christopher Eccleson. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes. That, that's why when I said everyone lives, I was like, just as once, everyone, everyone lives. Everyone lives. lives. <laughs> yeah, that's an awesome song. My favorite is, of course, or one of my favorites is, um... Oh my gosh, it was the one with, uh, it was based on the episode, a Matt Smith episode, when the cracks close. Oh, um, um Big it? Bang. Yeah. The Big, Big Bang, Bang 2? No, um, it's when he's putting Amy back to bed. Oh, oh, oh um, um, the, um, re, the regeneration. Regeneration? Uh, uh, yeah. No, no, the, uh. No, you're talking about Big Bang 2, because it goes into that speech at the end of the episode. Yeah, it does, but it's a completely different song from Big Bang 2. 
Mm. The I'm talking about trying to think of the name of the song. Um, it is from Big Bang Two, but uh, I think um, it's a, it's like a lullaby. Song. I, think, you know, I always forget when I want to say something. I forget the name of who I'm talking about. But I just kept hearing monkeys, monkeys, monkeys. monkeys. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, the the, uh, lodge, the, one the lodger. lodger. Yeah. Hello. Uh, hello. I'm a lizard like person from the center of the earth. Yeah. And this yeah, is my wife. <laughs> But they they have that song Canine's Lament, oh. and oh, it just oh. makes me cry like a little. That life would, would be like, like you. If. I could choose not to say yeah. affirmative. Oh, that's so sad. And I know. He, he has this moment where he's like, "You just gave me away without." Oh, I know. It's like, oh, no one thought to ask me like what I wanted, you know? Because he did at the end of uh, Sarah Jane, who has probably the worst way to leave the Doctor ever. If you watch um, her arc. Because she was the companion for the third Doctor, and then she was the first companion for Tom Baker. I forgot how she left. And the way it went down was the Time Lords were had this situation where they pulled him up to get back to Gallifrey. And he's like, I gotta go. And he left her with K-9, and then he went to Gallifrey, and then he oh, just left yeah. her. He just, mm. he, he didn't, he never went back for her. And wow, that's a, that, that's a good friend. Yeah. Of course, she kind of, whenever she finds him again with David Dennett, she's like, he regenerated again. He's like, a few times. And she even calls him on that. It's like, you just left me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? And I was and just like, oh! oh! He's at the end of the episode. She, he, She's like, do I get it? And he's like, goodbye, my Sarah Jane. Yeah. He's like, that's like, that's all she ever wanted was for him to actually just say it. Wanted goodbye. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Goodbye, my Sarah Jane. And his, yeah, I, I think like, that was one of like, the first oh, episodes I saw, other than the first episode. Well, I like this. Oh, he's fixing K9. They're like, if he's still advanced, why does he look retro? Yeah, and he's like, he's from the 24th century. Everything looks <laughs> retro. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You get some. It's amazing how they've been able to keep a straight continuity. Mm-hmm. Without really contradicting themselves, yeah. well, to just different the writers, writers different the way he did. He pretty much said, "You like they had a big fan in the 24th century where everything had to look old." <laughs> well, um, the, the, basically, what he did though. The <laughs> only time they really contradict each other was like Atlantis, as far as I'm aware of, because three oh. different doctors did three different takes on Atlantis that are kind of different, but they actually do work. Silence at the end of all things. That's the name of the song I was thinking Oh, of. Silence of the... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the, the song. See, the thing is, when I hear that song, I think of Will Hartnell. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Even though it does have lines from Matt Smith, I think of Will Hartnell. Oh, but back to what I was saying earlier about Donna Noble, was I liked her, she was really great, because he just needed, he wanted a friend. He's like, you know, I'm done with this whole trying to find the yeah, other thing. I just need somebody to hang out with. And when he first finds her again after, like, in the Adipose episode, like, it's one of the funniest model, like, not monologues ever. Like, they're just looking at each other through yeah. windows and a door. <laughs> oh, yeah. And she's like, she's like, waves, and she's like, Doctor! And he's like, Donna? <laughs> it's me! He's like, I can see that. How'd you get inside? Uh, this is so great. How'd you get in there? And the lady's <laughs> like, we're not interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, real quick, because we're, we're pretty mu- we're almost at an hour. Um, we're actually, uh, the clock says we're over, but we got a little wiggle room. Screw the clock. Yeah. 50th anniversary, so we've been going this way, let's go that way. What do you want to see in the 50th? I haven't actually given thought to that at all. Oh, you're so. just like, it's going to be awesome. I don't know. I don't she's know. Like, I just, she's, I, she's excited as a whole. I don't yeah. want to expect something and have it not happen. I just want it to be a blank slate and just see what See what, what the, happens. Mm-hmm. That's what I want, is to, everything to be a surprise to me. That's mm. how I am most of the time, but I will admit there's one thing I want. When it gets to me, right. there's one thing <laughs> I want to see. Honestly, what I want to see can't happen. I want to see Eccleston come back for one episode. He won't. That's what I, I know he won't, but he that's what I come want. Back. Eccleson, he released that statement that was just so, oh, why would you say that? Yeah. No. And then what I was thinking was, because when he left the show, it got leaked that he was leaving, because he wanted to surprise the fans. Mm-hmm. He wanted to surprise everyone with the regeneration. Mm-hmm. And then they leaked it. They yeah. leaked it. Press got a hold of it and leaked it. So I thought he was throwing smoke mm-hmm. to make his comeback. Like, that's what I, I, I like, Eccleston. And then, uh, you, well, well you saw Thor, because Eccleston's the bad guy yeah. in yeah. in Thor. He plays uh, time, Malachi. Did you, did you see the meme <laughs> set up, the, the meme thing, where he's like, an alien crash in London. Oh, what am I fighting this time? And then it shows him, and it's like, he's like, ooh. <laughs> like, like, this could be interesting. But, like, imagine how perfect it would be to go 
from the Night of the Doctor 8 to 8.5, and then 8.5 to 9. If we could somehow bridge that gap perfectly... To like, get that regeneration. Yes, because that's like yeah. the one that we do not have. I'll say, you know, because even with that last, uh, you know, that little clip of uh, showing the eighth Doctor to 8.5. Like, yeah. okay, now we've seen that. Yeah. Well, because before they released that, the thing I really wanted to see was Paul McGann. And then I was thinking, oh, well, halfway through, he's going to regenerate into Eccleston. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'd like, that's great. what I was that's thinking. That's what I thought was going to happen. And it was like, they just, they, well, they gave us an Eccleston. They gave us a regeneration yeah, right from the get-go. Uh, well, plus, but you know, with Eccleston, you, you kind of, they, in the first episode of, in Rose, they show that he hasn't been regenerated for that long because he's like, he's looking in the mirror and he's like, oh, God's had worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Big like years, you know. Yeah. 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 But like, so I would love it, you know, if they did show him regenerating Eccleston. Like, that's like one surprise. They literally, like, like threaten people with death not to say anything. Yeah. Like, at the end, like, William, uh, Hurt just turns into like regenerates into Eccleston. All they all they really have to do is just show him as the Doctor. They don't even have to have him speak. All yeah. they got to do is just have him transform. Like, he regenerates then... into Eccleston, and like they look at him, they try to say something. He's like, and gets in the and TARDIS he walks away. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, nope, nope. This is oh. my big bag of nope. Uh, <laughs> <what? laughs> um, That's my favorite thing from now on. I know, yeah, right? Big bag of nope. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but I imagine Santa Claus saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Showing up some naughty <laughs> kid's house. Big, no, big bag of nope. Guess what everyone's getting for Christmas? <laughs> this big <laughs> bag of nope. He goes to the Jewish kids' houses. <laughs> Look at my bag of nope, nope, nope. Um, I really want to see because uh, they did a great job in the name of the Doctor by reusing classic footage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They actually yeah. integrated new that. footage that was cool. with old footage. That was so so the well whole done. scene on Gallifrey at the beginning, I was like, awesome. <laughs> I want to see because um, there's if you've ever seen the Five Doctors. Oh, that's a good one. It, it's their thirtieth anniversary. is It is the first time um, they had they had all five doctors together, and at the ten year anniversary, they did the three doctors. That one was also a good with um, Will Hartnell um, in, a bubble. in a bubble. In a bubble with the two doctors, and one thing I absolutely love that they kept over from the two specials was whenever their continuity it came about, whenever there was something where he had to cross his own timeline. The second Doctor and the third Doctor do not get along. Oh, yeah, he doesn't. Um, <laughs> they don't get along. They, they make fun of each other. Yeah. The third Doctor calls the second one an imp. An imp? He yeah. calls him an idiot a lot, too. Yeah. Like, like you are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I was ever that stupid. Like, they, <laughs> they, you know, that's the whole point of the third Doctor is the two Doctors, could, or the three Doctors, two and three could not work together. So the uh, Will Hartnell had to be brought in. To, they had to bring in Hartnell. To, to like, look, you got to work through this together, yeah. idiots. Um, I'm the youngest one out of all of us, and I'm still smarter than the both of you. I'm the most mature. <laughs> but when they did the Five Doctors, Tom Baker, who had just left the show, and they just started um, David P uh, Peter Davidson's run. Yeah. Tom Baker didn't want to come back, so they called the Five Doctors, even though Tom Baker's not really in it. They used stock footage shot around some of the stuff but the most iconic doctor the fourth doctor the one who did it for seven years isn't in the five doctors and there's one scene in the trailer where it's a circular shot around the console of the tardis and you see a couple of the different older doctors i want to see the second doctor and the third doctor not get along and I want to see all of them together. together. Just think of that you, one You know the shot. TARDIS isn't real, right? <laughs> 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 give, me, give me that one I'll shot. I'll that. I'll have to, you know, comfort You'll be laying comfort. in bed like crying. Why? Why would Mike Why say such bullshit? Shatter? You're going to get a phone call. Mike, <laughs> what are they going to tell me next? Santa Claus isn't real. I know, right? Hey, I brought Mike, a comic about Santa Claus. Santa I can't Claus is handle real. this anymore. Come and comfort my husband. Oh, awesome looking. You mean, about Dr. Who? Oh. Okay, I'll be there. <laughs> um, I cannot handle can I wear, him. Can I wear a red wig? <laughs> I cannot handle him crying on me anymore. Come hold him. I'm getting pruny. It's that bad. <laughs> so, my hands should never look this old. <laughs> so, Mike, what do you want to see? A little bit of what you said, you know, older doctors uh, set up in there, but I really want to see David Tennant. I, I just want to see him 
at the, at the peak of his at, at the peak of ten. At the peak of ten? Yeah, back whenever he was full blown, you know, like. Well, there's fake, a scene fake in the full. in the trailer with eleven and ten comparing Sonic Screw. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah like, like they're measuring see, up. Like I, I want to see I, him I, like totally just full on. I want him to say LNZ at least eighty times. At least eighty. <laughs> at least <laughs> I'm gonna be counting. Well, well, I got us. I got all those little census clickers. <laughs> 79 like Raptor Crits I don't see oh, there we go. Hey. <laughs> what I'm interested to find out is when we last left off Rose she was with not Dr. Doctor right yeah. She's with, we, he's she, been dubbed on the internet the meta doctor the meta doctor. doctor okay so we've seen Rose in the preview for she's like all like yeah. is she actually guard. with Meta Doctor, or is you, that actually That's my intent? worry right there. That's what I want no, not to happen. Is it, like they show and be like, "Well, this is actually the Meta Doctor." No, yeah. no. Here's By the thing: not really the Doctor. <laughs> here's here's oh, there's bro. one scene in the trailer. I'm just a where <laughs> <laughs> um, where that's how poor I am. This could just be the, they could be just throwing shit in the trailer to mess with us, mess with us. Mm-hmm. But there's a scene where Rose, her eyes glow like she did. At the like end, she re, like when she, she became the heart of the target. when she mm-hmm. looked in the heart. Oh. so I'm thinking this event for Rose takes place when she was in the heart of the TARDIS. Oh my god! Yeah, because she so slipped this, out of time. This mm-hmm. happens. I'm hope- she disappeared for. A, she supposedly like was only gone for like just a split second, but that it's could be millions split of years. In the heart of the TARDIS is how long? Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Nobody knows. So this, I'm thinking this chronologically takes place with during this period. That time and the one That's thing that amazing. blows my mind is there's a scene in the trailer with Rose and John Hurt. Yeah. Which means by the time you get to Eccleson, he knows about Rose. That's why he took her. Oh my god. god. Yeah. Mind blown. Holy shit. <laughs> well, well, what what I, I want to see... That- you think about Chris Watt, no one really talks about him all that much, but I was at work the other day and I was thinking about Doctor Who... And as you do at work, as I do, <laughs> I mean, I say L N Z when I see people sometimes. Yes. But um, you, get the, you get that random. His line about like totally who I am, like you, I can feel the earth moving. Oh, when so I, good! I kept that kept repeating in my head. I'm like, I can't work, you guys. My mind is being blown. <laughs> as he's saying that, yeah, because he's saying that he's like, right now, I we're falling it. through, we're spring. falling through space. Yeah. I can feel the turn of the earth. Uh, X amount of miles a minute or whatever. And I was like, holy crap! Oh, 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 oh. I'm just sitting there going. <laughs> but I, the one thing I always wanted to know was where did the doctor go whenever he left Rose the first time, and as Eccleston when he disappeared and he came back. Because mm-hmm. for her, he was gone a, a few seconds. Oh, that's right. For right. him, he could have been gone years. I want to know where he went. I don't think he was gone that long. I, I feel like don't. he was like, wait, you turn. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially if he knows at uh, with John Hurt the importance of Rose, yeah. he probably just. Disappeared, reappeared. Like he says, maybe like, he like, forgot and then remembered. Like he's okay. leaving, and he's like, "Wait a minute, blonde hair, kind of chat." Holy Whoa! Shit! <laughs> Come on, you turn, you turn. Come on, do it now, sexy. Let's go. <laughs> okay. yeah. hmm. I can't speaking, of, right? um, speaking of sexy, there's a GIF on Tumblr of it's a one of those three D GIFs, but it pretty much just looks like a TARDIS is pole dancing, <laughs> and someone underneath him is like, "Now that's sexy." <laughs> <laughs> yes, you sexy. Does he still talk to it when he's working on bits of it? Only, um, when, they're, only when they think they're alone. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, do you guys I, need a minute? <laughs> How long is he Apparently, um, the in that, that scene, uh, when, during the school reunion, when the, when the Rose and Sarah Jane are going back and laughing. I knew John when, was an alien. <laughs> when um, David Tennant <laughs> runs in and is like, what are you guys laughing at? You know? Apparently, they're looking at him like, yeah, you know. Apparently, uh, in the scenes where you see them, but you see just his back. Yeah. David Tennant, when he ran in, had drawn a mustache on himself. To make and, him laugh. And that's why they're laughing so hard, because looking at him was a mustache. Because they couldn't convey, like, they they couldn't really laugh that well, and he's like, I got it. <laughs> so he so, did the mustache, and he walks in, they're like, oh my gosh! So like, that's why you see Rose Point. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it, oh, I love the doctor. So yeah, every yeah. time I see that scene now in school reunion, I'm sort of like, he's got a mustache on him. <laughs> mustache. mustache. It'd be funny if he's like, doing like the eyebrow mustache. thing, where he's like, what? <laughs> or, uh, did we, did you say what was your what you were yeah. looking forward to? Oh, and I saw what, I, and I also said what I was li- hoping never happens. Mm. Yeah. Well, I know for me, Ginger Doctor. You know, <laughs> that's what I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Peter maybe Capaldi. Not this, maybe not. You know, for the 50th because you know. Sure. It's, but eventually, 
I do want to see a ginger doctor. I do. Ginger wanna. woman doctor. <laughs> ginger <laughs> woman doctor. <laughs> you know, and it was so cool. We went to the woman thing um, at uh, Comic Con. I think it was last year, 2012. Uh, two years ago. Or... It was 2000. I don't know. No, it was 2012. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we went and we actually got into the Doctor Who panel on my birthday, which was so amazing. I was like, yay, you know. But someone asked, is there ever going to be a woman doctor? And Matt Smith was like, I certainly hope so, <laughs> you know, kind of thing, like eventually. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. Um, so, but for the, as far as the 50th is concerned, kind of, like, honestly, I know it's going to sound like I'm riding on everyone's coattails, but I want to see a little bit of everything, like you guys just said. I mean, I, I don't have too high of, like you said, you know, expectations. But there's certain things I do think would be cool. Like, I do want to see all the doctors, or, you know, standing around, as many as possible, standing around the console, Somehow, like, yeah. bumping into <laughs> each other. They stop <laughs> on Tom Baker, and, they're, and the doctor's like, why did we get fat? <laughs> 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 and then they go again. But, you know, just like, I don't know, I think that's what I want to see, is as many doctors as possible. I mean, obviously, they're not going to get all the doctors, because the first three had passed on, but even, but like, they stock reused, footage. Yeah, they reused you know? footage in the name of the doctor. Like, just, yeah. that would be so cool to see. And no fan would get upset about that. Yeah. Because no. 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 that's the doctor at the most honestly, iconic. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't get anyone else besides, you know, whatever, I want to see the first doctor. I want to see stock footage of Will Hartnell, <laughs> because it's the 50th. Yeah. Yeah, and they can it's like it. they can do that. You know, without <laughs> They've done that in yeah. without the first doctor, you don't have the rest of this great history. You know, so I want to see a little bit of stock footage of the first doctor. You I know? just I just had this thought hit me, and I think it'd be cool. Is about the whole uh, John Hurt regenerating thing. Is you know, use stock footage of Christopher Eccleston's face, just like put over that real quick, and then when it's done regenerating, just have like a guy with a shaved head and big ears walking away. You don't yeah. ever see his yeah, face. Yeah, you don't have to. That would be great. And Chris Rock was like, I could have done that. I could have done that. We told you! You know how much money we offered you! <laughs> well, you know what? Like, Chris Eccleson, I don't know if he's coming back. I, I hope so. Um, I hope so, too. Just awesome. trick him. It's not Doctor Who. Yeah. He, he just played the villain in Thor. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sylvester McCoy mm -hmm. is in The Hobbit right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I he mean, they, they are doing, uh, it could be scheduling conflict. You know, mm -hmm. that's well, true. I, I recently saw this interview um, on YouTube where, um, by the way, British journalists are so much more classy than American journalists. It's the journalists. accent. It's the accent. Because if you read <laughs> Bleeding Cool, which is a British magazine mm -hmm. all about comics, uh, some people hate Bleeding Cool. Oh, okay. Because it, it's the accent. If you're dealing with just the journalist content, like Bleeding Cool is the king of comic book news right now. Because they're based in the UK and the comics come out twelve hours earlier. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, but um, go on. But the the interview was um, somebody was talking to Eccleston about like his projects, and then they happened to talk about the fiftieth anniversary special. And at this time period, whenever it was that he was interviewed, the guy asked him, "Have you been approached to do this or anything?" And and he said, "No, nothing. Nothing had happened at that point. I don't know when this was, but it was relatively recently." Mm -hmm. So. Which disappoints the fuck out of me. Well, oh Moffat, God. you know, I uh, love Moffat. And I'm, I'm Moffat's, not gonna, Moffat's not going to disappoint. Moffat's not going to disappoint. He's probably my favorite Doctor Who writer. I, I have faith in Moffat. When Jovert killed, when, when killed himself and Les Mis, I was like, Moffat wrote this too. Yeah. <laughs> and I was already impressed by Davies, but Moffat just oh, blew it Davies out of the water. Is, you know, I, I've, I've said this in the past. I, I used to have issues with homophobia. And there's this. Then he met Harkness, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah like, they wear a World War II trench coat. <laughs> um, but no, like um, uh, when I was younger, I had, I had issues with homophobia, mostly coming from a strong Christian family. Not an issue now, um, but like they addressed it so beautifully in Torchwood mm -hmm. that like it, it just you know kind of put it out of my mind. Like no, it's you know the way that that issue was was uh, addressed. Again, send your angry letters to so, care uh, of. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, there's a great scene that uh, Russell T. Davis wrote in Torchwood uh, Series 5 where he literally said, because he's sleeping with a Catholic man, uh, Captain Jack Harkness, and he goes, it's just sex. If it was actually love, would your do would your God still be angry? And it's, it, it's an amazing, beautifully written piece. Hmm. You know, and Russell Isn't that T. Davis. Italian guy had him butchered for like a month. In yeah. The basement. But Russell T. Davis was able to do that within the world of Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. Which that that takes that takes doing. 
to get that done. But uh, oh, oh, the feels. The feels. Okay, um, we're almost at, we're we're way over time. Real quick, wrapping up. We'll we'll we normally wrap up by going around saying who's reading what. So, what are you reading right now, Emily? Well, I'm still working on the um, Hulk. You know the what do you call it? Marvel Now stuff. Oh yeah, the new Hulk series. So, um, you know, I'm working on that and Thor. And as far as novels go, I'm working on, currently on the second book of the Mortal Instruments, which, you know, it's okay. <laughs> and I'm also, it's okay. I'm also working on Weathering Heights for the first time. I, nice. I never actually read it, so I was like, you know, yeah, it's just stay away from razor blades for a while. After you <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I got real emo. I read that in high school, and I was like, "Nothing matters." <laughs> I hate you this all. Poor soul. <laughs> uh, and I, I was the same time. I was like, "Tori England was a, sucked." Savage these place, people, man. These people. Behind all that crap. propriety and the you know upper class. Were they all so that miserable? <laughs> so depressing. Money makes me miserable. I don't know. Yeah. But you know, yeah, I'm actually yeah, glad to be poor. <laughs> I'm actually going through that and reading that for the first time. So I was like, I, I'm, I'm really liking the format of how it was written yeah. you know. uh, I actually uh, just picked up three back issues for the uh, Uncanny X-Force uh, Age of Apocalypse so I got, I'm going to read them because they finished they wrapped that up and I was missing three issues um, I picked up the first issue of The Shadow Now Oh, okay. I'm going to try and get into that series uh, IDW right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, or Dino, I don't no it's Dynamite. Dynamite it's Dynamite I was looking at a couple of IDW titles too but uh Novel-wise, I'm reading a book that I got for my birthday uh, called uh, Good Omens. I'm, I'm getting ready to start that one up. Yeah, who gave you that one, by the way? Ah, some dude. Some <laughs> and, and his chick. <laughs> Brandon Miller. I think I have that, actually. I the Terry that, yeah, Pratchett, but, yeah, Neil yeah. Gaiman, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just starting that, and then I was reading another book. It was, I haven't, but I put it down, and I, like, things got a little crazy. It was, um, it was, uh... Something science fiction. We'll pick it up. I'll, I'll yeah. think of it later. Um, for me, anytime I go to the comic book store, and I'm losing my mind over DC. Oh, they're doing uh, so much. Oh, for, Forever Evil is so. Oh, well I almost written. bought. I almost bought a lot of uh, a bunch of issues of Phantom Stranger that that are connected to Forever Evil. Well, uh, Phantom Stranger is being written by uh, Dan DiDito, who's the chief I like, publisher I like of DC. <laughs> but uh, I like his. He and I have similar tastes in just characters. He brought back Omac. He, you know, so it just he kills question, kind of. In we kind of, kind of in. Well, that. who's not dead at this point That's in true. DC continuity? Well, he, he, well, he's like I almost bought the issue uh, question no more of the Phantom Stranger for, Forever Evil line, and I was like, no, I like the question. Well, uh, Forever Evil, oh my God, so well done because you have the crime syndicate from the 1940s. You have all the heroes are gone. They. Yeah, you know, with the exception of a half dead cyborg, Batman and Catwoman. Yeah, and it's like villains. Of Batman makes it to the end. Uh, Luthor, Bizarro, Black Manta, Captain Adam, and Captain Cold are have combined to like try to bring down the crime syndicate. Oh, nice! And it's so well done. It's so well written. So well drawn. There's a scene where Ultraman, who's the evil version of Superman, yeah, who goes all Ultraman. Goes all uh, continuity wise. What's the, goes back. the symbol of on Krypton? Yeah, uh, well, murder. Murdered. <laughs> Ultraman goes all the way back to the 1940s. Oh yeah. And um, he, they, they even did him an Ultraman in Smallville. Yeah. Oh, they did. They did. They did where he'd travel to an alternate universe. The whole world was blue. Yeah. And blue kryptonite. And that's all continuity. But Ultraman is fighting Black Manta, and Black Manta hits him with the Shazam, and it messes Ultraman up for a little bit, and he goes words. You try to hurt me with words and breaks Manta's jaw, Ugh. or Adam's jaw, breaks right. Black Adam's jaw, and then almost leaves him for dead. And it's just like, oh, that's that's Adam, you know, one of the biggest baddest villains in DC. Marvel so, couldn't even kill him. So, so I'm I'm reading Forever Evil, and anytime I go into the comic shop right now, I'm like, I just lose my mind when I see the DC stuff because it's so well written, I, so well done. I almost let myself just be flooded with all the Forever Evil stuff. I was like, no, no. I am, I am. I I, I self controlled, and then I saw uh, issue one of fan, of uh, Shadow Now, and I was like, I'm gonna get that, and I'm gonna try and pick up issue two fairly soon because issue two had just dropped that day, but we had one. 
So I'm like, I'm gonna read this, and then I saw issue two, and in the alt cover, it's the Phantom, not the Phantom, it's the Shadow, and he's got, like, blood smeared on the wall, and he looks like he's about to go down. Yeah. I was like, second issue! <laughs> um, but, uh, that's, that's comic books. Uh, novels, uh, we picked up on our honeymoon, uh, Melina and I picked up a bunch of Doctor Who novels. Nice. And they're, not shocked. Yeah, I know, not shocked. <laughs> and so we're, we're reading some of these Doctor Who novels, um, uh, Gaiman just put out a... a Alan Z, he screamed as he, as yeah. he pulled out a familiar metallic screwdriver. Uh, no, they're they're pretty cool. There's one scene. They're Matt Smith, uh, the ones that oh, you're on the Matt up. Smith one. Matt Smith. There's one piece of dialogue that stuck with me where it's like, that is so Matt Smith, where it's they're in medieval Europe and this guard, this knight, is talking to the doctors like, you got to come with me. You need to look at this woman. And the doctor's like, I'm in the middle of something. And it's like, no, you need to look at this this woman. And the doctor looks at him and goes, how important is this woman to you? And the guard goes, I would die for her. And the doctor looks at him and goes, if you had said I would kill for her, I wouldn't come with you. And he gets up and walks with this this, this knight. And it's like, that's so... Yeah. That's so the doctor. That nailed everything that it needed to nail in that one scene. Um, so, uh, Lewis, uh, what do you... What are you reading? Uh, my attentions are pretty much perpetually divided. Right now, I'm in Superman Earth 1 Volume 2, uh, the last volume of Superman for All Seasons, Walking Dead Omnibus Volume 1, and uh, Dark Tower, The Gunslinger Born. Holy crap. You're, you yeah. got a full plate. I do, I do. Um, are there any novels in that? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to start The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, who is actually J.K. J. Rowling, yeah. Yeah. which I'm very excited about, because that one got really big reviews I, before we found out who really yeah. wrote it. it. It's believed the publisher released it. Really? Like, Be she like initially they, didn't want Because yeah. what happened was a random Twitter account magically popped up, made the announcement, and then disappeared. <laughs> So it's it's believed, it, you know. This is I, happening. Delete oh, account. God. As yeah. an indie publisher, like I look at that, I'm like that's so dirty. If your yeah. if your writer is, did uh, not want her identity, because uh, uh, Stephen King used to write under mm -hmm. Ananda um, Plume. Oh God, um, Richard Bachman. Richard Bachman. Yeah. Which they reference in Resident uh, 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 Silent uh, Hill. Yeah. Some of the streets are named Bachman and, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, I really wanted to read the Cuckoo's Calling, mm -hmm. you know, and. I don't have the money to buy it yet, but eventually I will buy it and read it. <laughs> I, I have a version on my Nook is what it is. Oh, really? so, um, we, we love the Nook. All our books are available on the Nook and Kindle, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pluggity plug plug. Sluggity um, plugaroo. So I'm going to start that. I'm, I'm like halfway through one of the Pendergast novels. Uh, it's like two or three behind what they're currently doing. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. Mm. That's my literary plate. Um, I'm actually taking a break from all reading of comic books and novels to work on my YouTube videos. Okay, so. we're done. We're done. <laughs> yeah. right, good night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, tell us about it. The plug your plug your YouTube videos. Uh, well, recently. What, what's your I, channel? It's uh, the Dewey Bet. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> nice. Um, because Christ. originally it was supposed to be me and my cousins doing movie reviews of eighty films, so Dewey Bet kind of. Uh, worked out, but now I'm just. Oh my gosh, the Breakfast Club. <laughs> <laughs> I now love I'm the Breakfast Club. I'm just doing uh, blogs, and oh, I, I recently uh, did a promotion that. for Chronicles of Syntax, who we mentioned someone from it earlier. That's Liam Dryden, and um, I don't know. I'm just trying to get back oh. into it and see how it works out. Might do movie reviews again. We are you. We have a YouTube page, and we're we're trying to get everything squared away so that at the beginning of the year, every week we'll have a video uploaded. Because we, we were able to do it pretty successfully for our failed Kickstarter. We had for 30 days a video. You didn't have to put day. in that it failed. You could have just said Kickstarter. Oh, no. It's, I, trust me. It's failed. Like, yeah, no, like, I know, but you didn't have to say we, it. We could say, like, the, the tragically unappreciated <laughs> Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. You're a writer. You need to have some flavor in it. Yeah. Um, well, no. Like, after we didn't severely raise the money, I was severely underappreciated. <laughs> yeah, after we didn't raise the money, I was I went through a bit of a depression. Like, I thought there's this is a no brainer. He had me take all the swords out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> he he almost threw himself on him a couple of times. Um, as a warrior should go out. 
Do um, so you know what your sin is? <laughs> so no, that, that's, and that's just what you saw. Magic coming out, seeing him. You know, he had on the floor. You the stance ah! like that with one of his swords, and I remembered the scene, and I was like, whoa, no! And he fell on the ground. Maylene came in. What's going on? Nothing. You have a lot of work to do, but nothing. <laughs> but, uh... Um, no, that's, that's pretty cool. The dweeb app. Mm-hmm. Do you, you you got the the Twitter handle yet? No. You she might want to do that. We'll we'll give you time before we upload this to <laughs> <laughs> get your Twitter, Twitter, Twitter handle. Twitter. She, doesn't, she doesn't like Twitter. She doesn't like that I'm on Twitter. Like, no, so. I'm on Twitter. I have, but I mean, not as oh, yeah. the dweeb. No, it's, app. Um, what, what is your? Yeah. Yeah. It might be the dweeb. App. I well, she's like, I just go on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever they tell me. Um, but I was on Tumblr and some girl randomly. Uh, added me on Tom or whatever you do on Tumblr. Followed I don't know. Me. Either. And her name was the Dweeb. And I'm like, excuse me, where did you find that name? Yeah. And she's like, I don't know. It just came to me. I'm like, then how did you find me? Because the only way you can get to my Tumblr is if you go on my YouTube videos. Change it. Change it. Change your name. You should just change yours back. Yeah. Well, we had a problem with the Lamaya Knights. It was a charity group I I created and co-founded, and it ran for years. We do sword fighting and, and all the medieval reading. We had a problem where there was a, 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 a group who took our name and they were uh, writing um, erotic uh, uh, gay porn um, and publishing it no, with Please like no. the, the Lamionites tag. And we're a charity who works with kids. Oh. So we couldn't be... Look, some... Mom, I'm on the live and I'm saying, let's see some of their charity. What the hell? So, <laughs> Are you on Nambla? <laughs> we we actually had to send them a cease and desist letter. <laughs> wow. Like, like I'm sorry, we are a uh, accredited charity. You can't use our name. <laughs> I hear anything about members and quivering again with our pin name. You will see some very bad stuff. Yeah, so as far as I know, they, 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 they kept writing... But uh, not that I'm opposed to that type of literature, but when you're a, cha- a charity that works, works with kids. children, you can't be... You can't have yeah. any type of erotic stuff yeah. involved in that. Yeah, there's, there's no way that's going to fly. So, <laughs> you um, send them another letter and it's like, you do realize we own swords and know how to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're in the continental United States. We will find you. We will find you. <laughs> and if you're not, we have friends in Europe. <laughs> well, trust me, they're the crazy ones. And on that threatening <laughs> note, <laughs> um, you've listened to At the Table with Destiny Comics. Uh, thank you for listening. Chicken. The following podcast was a production by Destiny Comics, sponsored by DestinyComics.wix.com/slash comics. Recorded live in Hemet, California. Produced by executive producer Michael Sanders. A special thanks to any and all guests who participated. No, 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 no. Before we wrap everything up, um, at the very beginning of this podcast, we were talk of a promotional code. And that's what I'm giving to you right now. For any of our merchandise, the lunch boxes, the t-shirts, the posters, any of our merchandise, uh, 20% off. Boom. What you do is uh, when you're, you're at the, you're paying for your products, you already figure out which of our amazing stuff you're buying, and then at checkout, you use the promotional code 20 for you. That is T W E N T Y F O R Y O U. One word, 20 for you. Boom. Off the top, 20%. Boom. That's your Black Friday sale right there, everybody. That's going until the 28th on all of our merchandise. All of the books, if you want to buy, you know, some of our, our graphic novels, Mr. Cuddles, Tell Finally, Tunes and Tales of War, Tales of the Destiny, boom. They're already marked down right there for you when you go to our website, destinycomics.wix.com slash comics. Boom. Everything's marked down for you. Enjoy your Black Friday. Enjoy your Cyber Monday. Um, we are going to be at IE Comics on Black Friday um, and Cyber Monday. You're gonna, we're gonna at that same website, DestinyComics.wix.com/comics. Boom. Um, we're gonna be giving away a free comic book. You know how much that word "free" hurts me, but we're giving away a free downloadable comic on Cyber Monday. So thank you for your support and thank you for. Uh, listening to our podcast 
and uh, we hope you like this. All right. Bye.